Fantastic Beasts 3, The Secrets of Dumbledore trailer finally dropped. We were really continuing with that name, huh? That name skew, Fantastic Beasts. I feel like everyone involved knows it was a mistake to go with Fantastic Beasts initially, but they're just gonna double down on it and here we are. Let's talk about the trailer. First thing, David Yates is back in the directing chair. He's done all of these Fantastic Beasts movies so far. He did the last four Harry Potter films as well. So he's been around the castle grounds quite a few times. I really enjoyed his work on the Harry Potter films, and that's mainly because tonally, the films were getting darker as they progressed. So it was fine with me to see the magic kind of take a step back and get more characters out front and the drama and the emotion, especially in Half-Blood Prince when it feels like the magic is completely sucked out of the school. Now, however, starting a new series with Fantastic Beasts, I'm not so sure David Yates is the right call here. It is missing a lot of that magic. The first one was serviceable. I think I was pretty easy on it, much like I was with Star Wars The Force Awakens. But then those second movies hit and oh my god, we, we have to do some course correction. Hopefully that's what we see today. The trailer starts by reminding us of better movies. There's Elvis Dumbledore, the old weathered second version. And then we jump to the third version, played by the youngest of them, Jude Law, who did a, he did a fine job in the last film. Nothing really wowed me in that film overall though, so hopefully here he gets to, he gets to do a bit more. They're really trying to remind us of the good old days. We have a shot of Hogwarts right out of the gates. We even see the snitch flying around. Okay, so we have our third version of Grindelwald now in three movies, a new one each time. In the first film, it was revealed that Colin Farrell, who I think was the superior Grindelwald, was actually Johnny Depp all along. He gets his frosted white tipped hair and his cool style. Uh, but now that's over and it's Mads Mikkelsen. So was it a disguise on top of a disguise? I'm only asking because he doesn't look even remotely similar to the last interpretation. It, he doesn't look like Johnny Depp. He's got a totally different hairstyle. <laughs> Actually, it just looks like Mads Mikkelsen showed up on set and they said action, didn't even go into wardrobe. How is this any different than any other role he's played? I, I'd be very curious to see how this works out. I like the actor. It's just a shame what all went down. And if you don't know why Depp is missing this time around, it's because he was bought off, basically. They paid for him to not be in this film. Uh, he was originally contracted to be in the whole series. This all went down because he and America's sweetheart, Amber Heard, have had a little bit of issues, to say the least. Domestic abuse, verbal assault, things of that nature. I'm not gonna get into it because I don't like the whole he said, she said shit. And it, I don't know if anything ever came out of it. Uh, I, I, I truly don't follow any of this stuff. It's kind of tabloid gossip. Not really my cup of tea, I'm here for the movies. Uh, you can take whatever side you want, it makes no difference to me, but the bottom line is the movie suffers because of this. Now they have to either explain away why he changed appearance again, or they're just gonna kinda roll with this new look without even blinking an eye. Probably gonna be the latter of the two options. 30 seconds in and we finally see the protagonist of this film? I don't know. Is Newt Scamander still the protagonist anymore? Are we kind of shuffling him aside? Maybe skirting him to the side so old Dumby can have the limelight here. He's definitely the more interesting character. Personally, Newt Scamander never worked for me. In fact, half of that team up didn't. He and Tina, I think, who is very absent in this trailer. I, I It's blink and you miss her, in fact, which I'm also okay with because I did not like either of them. I really liked Jacob and Queenie, but then they kind of ruined Queenie in the second one. Uh, well, we'll see where things go. The trailer then introduces us to the crew, both old and new. Uh, we have some newcomers to the franchise. It looks like it's gonna be a ragtag bunch that's gonna have to take down one of the most evil, sinister villains in all of Harry Potter world outside of Voldemort, who just seems way better and cooler than this guy. But maybe they'll give him his due in this film. Maybe Mads Mikkelsen can, can finally give us our, our villain we've been waiting for. This is the first interesting thing in the trailer. Jacob gets a wand. Now, as we all know, he's a muggle, so he should have no magical capabilities. How are they gonna play this out? Is it just gonna be for jokes? My guess, yeah, it probably is just gonna be for jokes and that's okay. That's the other major issue with these films. Who is the audience here? My kids get bored to death by them. They're not smart enough for adults. They're just kind of waffling back and forth. Fantastic Beasts was definitely more whimsical, more fun natured. You had all the animals and stuff the kids liked. But then we get really dark really fast with the sequel and really dumb really fast. This one looks again to be tonally 
darker, drabber, that David Yates stank is on it. Uh, I, I don't know. I really don't know what to think here. The trailer's telling us we're going back to the magic, the magic that's been missing out of this franchise, but then we get a few more shots that aren't very magical. Oh, look at we got Fantastic Beasts in this. We have to somehow get beasts into this property still. And they seem forced now every time they get used. But we do get to see Newt's Commander do a little bit of a crab walk. So, I mean, if that's not worth the price of admission, I don't know what is. I will say this. I love me some good wand battling. This film looks to be chock full of it. There is a good amount of that CG building shit flying around again, which I really didn't like the first couple times they used it. Hopefully they calm down with that. I do see Credence is back. He's got a new look, new attitude. Let's calm down with Credence. Let's let's give him some purpose this time. Maybe make sense of his whole character. That would be nice. And now we have some more nostalgia bait. The Room of Requirement. How it began. What they did with it initially. <sighs> I just... I love the Harry Potter movies. All of them. I love them so much. I really wish these Fantastic Beasts would have worked out. I'm not excited for this, and that sucks. Will I see it? Of course I'll see it. I'm a movie lover, and I, I really do like the franchise. But am I excited? No. Did this trailer make me more of a believer? Absolutely not. I'm very concerned. Correct. Three points to Hufflepuff. Dumbledore divvies out some points to Hufflepuff at the end here, which might be historical. Possibly the first points that house has ever earned. That's not fair. Sorry. I'm Team Gryffindor. Well, that's that. Those are my thoughts on Fantastic Beast 3. It's, it's, it's a mess, guys. It's a mess. What do you think in the comments? Let me know. Are you really excited for this? Did this trailer win you over? Or are you like me, just kind of, just kind of wafting in the air, stuck in limbo? Personally, I, I just wish this was the end, but I think they have at least one more movie. Just, just cut it. Just stop it. Start over. Go to a different school completely with new characters. I'd say continue with the OG ones, but there's no way they'd do it justice. They would ruin it like every other one of these sequel properties does. So maybe just leave it be. Start another Harry Potter franchise. J.K. Rowling, I don't know. I mean, I feel like she needs to write new books and then they get adapted by someone else into screenplays because her screenplay writing is not up to snuff. I mean, it's rough. All right, well, those are my smoldering hot takes. If you like the video, please go ahead and give it a like. Dislikes don't show up anymore. Thanks, YouTube. I, I'm just a liked person. I feel so good about myself. Subscribe if you haven't. That's the number I really care about. People that are showing up when I post new videos. And hit that notification bell. And hopefully I'll see you next time. If you like my blunt honesty, I would really appreciate you joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a $1 tier there. Or you can become a member right here on YouTube. Hit that join button and you're in. You're, you're, you're in the magic. It's just a nice holiday present you could give me, especially when I'm a one-man operation doing this stuff. And I, I would really appreciate it.